What's up, everybody? I'm Steve Chapman from Fish in Florida Radio that broadcasts Saturday morning, 6 to 9 a.m. on several stations throughout Florida. You can listen on iHeart and, and watch us off Facebook live Saturday morning. But today is about another day about the amazing issues and the things that we've seen. Hello, Chris. Uh, the amazing things we've heard in the last couple days from Major League Fishing. They've got their 80 anglers compiled. We know the 80 now. And they are saying it is the world's strongest lineup. And quite honestly, it's really hard to imagine that they were able to, to get the anglers that they have. And this is uh, like we've been like we've said in other videos. This has really been the the biggest shakeup in bass fishing in ages. And tonight we'll go through some things that that we've learned. I reached out to some anglers today because one of the things that everyone kept asking is how is the sport going to evolve? Chef Bob is in the house from Boathouse. How is the sport going to evolve? Is Major League Fishing going to do better than everything? Um, Kevin, did I watch Ike last night? I thought it was rude as hell. I am in complete agreement with you. The problem, though, is, as I've been told by everyone else, that I need to let it go because I was overly pissed off last night. And we have Ike and Ellie on the show on Saturday. I'm not using my headphone today, so hopefully everyone's able to hear me properly. But... Yesterday it was about the, where the, the evolution of bass fishing is going to happen. Is this Major League Fishing good for fans? Is it good for anglers? Is it good for the evolution? Now I reached out to a bunch of people today. I reached out to Bill Lowen, Aaron Martin. Uh, I reached out to Brandon Palahniuk, uh, Boyd Duckett, Jacob Wheeler, and a whole bunch of other people. And... Uh, It was, it was kind of weird to hear what they, what they what they thought. I mean, most of these guys, we know now that eighty guys are going to the Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour, and the eighty are some of the greatest anglers on on the face of the earth. So much so that I've got my statistics and notes that of. The there's eight of the top ten ranked anglers in the world. Now there's a place called BassFan.com, and they rank the anglers over two years on how they do. Eight of the top ten anglers in the world are going to Major League Fishing. Two of those top ten fish on the FLW series, and there's zero in the top ten that are on the elites next year. Now, 40 of the top 50 anglers on the Elite, La Elite Series last year are moving over to MLF. 40 of the top 50. That's where things get crazy. So imagine the first person that's on the list that, that is who was ranked 18th last year in angular year points, Seth Fielder, is the highest ranking person from last year's angular year. And if you want to see the funniest video on if the person was committed to bass or if they're committed to major league fishing, you need to watch Seth Fielder's video. Now I should tell you right off the bat, there is a swear word. The F bomb comes out in the first five seconds, but it is flat out hilarious. And Seth is, has a great personality. So it all works out. And there's, there's, there's another part with Mark zone, uh, with, Dave Mercer giving everyone the finger. It's priceless. But getting back to this. So 40 of the top 50 anglers uh, that were in the 2008 angler year results have committed to Major League Fishing. You have your Kevin Van Dam, your Justin Lucas. At one point in time, we thought, would some of the young anglers actually move over to Bass? Because it was taking a little bit of time. Um, Justin Lucas was not... I'm not leaving, Andrew. I, I understand. Uh, Justin Lucas was one I was that I was I was concerned about because Bass started throwing out a lot of money to these anglers. Now I re I, I called, I didn't call, I reached out to Devin. Hey Bob. I reached out to Devin, not Devin, 
uh, Dave Precht of Bass uh, yesterday and said, what's going on with the field for the elites this year? They only have 40 people or 42 people committed right now of the 80 that they're going to take. So there'll be 38 new people that are going to be included into next year's elite, uh, elite series for Bass. So this is where the evolution of the sport comes. Some of the people that, since there's now three major tournaments, your Major League Fishing, your Bass Pro Tour is what it's called, your Bass Elites, and your FLW, now we're able to get a bunch of new anglers, probably 35, 40 new anglers from the, the Opens and other places that are going to be brought into the Elites to make the, to, can, to make the full field of 80. And that does help the evolution of the sport. And that's where this this is where everything has gone crazy. Is does this help? Does three tours help the evolution of the sport? We need to get younger anglers involved in fishing. That's where this comes down to. Now Bass does a, a decent job, and I should say decent because I've heard other things of doing things with the college students and also high school, but that's what their key is. They need to continue to get young anglers involved and get them outdoors. So does Major League Fishing and the 850 TV hours and the 350 online hours, which is now 1,200 hours or 12,000, 1,200 hours of television and internet time, does that help evolve the sport? So today I, call, I, I texted 15 anglers that I felt like would tell me the truth. What? Does does this shake up really ev help evolve fishing? So I re like I said I reached out to Bill Lowen, Brandon Palinick. These are the guys that responded to me. Um, Bill Lowen, Brandon Palinick, Aaron Martins, just uh, Jacob Wheeler, Boyd Duckett, and Dave Pratt. Now Bill Lowen, as soon as I sent him a text, he called me and said, first he was kind of teasing me because he was out fishing, and he was having a, a banner day. But he thought that this he said that. He wasn't, he wasn't sure this was going to help evolve the sport. He thought it was going to help bring new people in. And they, if you've ever met Bill, Bill is an unbelievably loyal, honest, good dude. When you, he is just one of the true humble people on the, on the elites. And he's always honest and he just shoots it straight with you, which is great because a lot of these guys, you text them and they they it's almost like they have to get somebody else's input before they send you their crap and it's just shit because it's it's like what why would you say this like and, and you're going to hear some of them here shortly but bill thought that the evolution of the sport still had to do with bass making sure that we had high school that they kept continued with the high school and the college students and that's where bass is going to help evolve the sport now bass setting this whole uh, payment of making sure all the anglers get paid and the $20,000 credit and they've given anglers money to stay with bass, that also helps too. The problem that has happened that we're now realizing throughout all these anglers that are joining Major League Fishing, they felt like nobody ever contacted them to see how they felt. That they were, uh, that they weren't that nobody was giving a pat on the back or they weren't being, they didn't know if they were being accepted. And also at times Bass would, would go, ask Steve for glasses, uh, they would go and steal some of their, not steal, but they would go to spo their sponsors and then kind of take them away. And the anglers had, had a true point. This isn't, we work so hard out there and we get these sponsors and they, and then Bass is taking them away from them. And I'm not making enough money. There's there's so many of these bottom anglers, uh, and I don't mean to be mean, but you get down to the bottom, this is my second page, you get down to these bottom anglers, and you start wondering if they actually made money last year, if they were able to pay their bills. I mean, they might be able to pay their bills, but are they able to pay their house payment and things like that? There was a guy two years ago, Jamie Hartman, who I think came in second place in, Ang in Rookie of the Year two years ago. And he actually sold his house and remortgaged everything because first off, he couldn't get the sponsors behind him because he was a new guy. And then second, 
he he got rid of everything for his one chance on the league tour. Now he did he had a great year and he made it up, but that a lot of times the first couple of years that these guys are in the series they don't make any money. So how do they pay their bills? I mean, to, to shell out $50,000 to go fishing for eight tournaments and have to ha make sure that you cash at least six times, you have to be in the top 50, is kind of really hard. Um, so uh, I used to ask advice, but stuff, a lot of anglers, stuff like sponsors are telling them what to say. Yeah, sponsors are telling them what to say. So it's really tough for some of these guys now. How Bass is reorganized and sh made this shift. Now you want to know it. There's there's a good chance that some of these guys are already just aut automatically going to make money and are going to turn a profit. And that is that does help the sport. That does help the sport. Getting the new 40 anglers to join the elites is going to help bring in some fresh talent too. I mean, the talent that's going over to MLF is when they say it's the strongest lineup. It is a who's who's of what it, it's going on. So like I said, this this morning, I texted a bunch of people. I got a hold of Bill. Bill called me right away and gave me his opinion on where they go. Um, then uh, Brandon Palinick texted me this, and this is exactly what Brandon texted me. We will continue to put out as many, and I quote, we will continue putting out as many people as possible that will watch or listen. The sport is always evolving, so that's going to happen no matter what. A lot of the latest evolving has been due to techno technology, which evolves faster than we, than we as humans can evolve. Major League Fishing has a vision to bring the sport of fishing to a higher level. There are still millions of people that enjoy fishing, but don't know a thing about tournament fishing. We have to take the sport and put it in front of people, not expect them to come to us or find us. So, there you go. Brandon Palnick just said, this is what it is. So I texted him back, you know, congratulations, I appreciate you, you calling me. Is there anything else? And he said, the, inf the new influx of money that's coming into the sport is also gonna help evolve the sport. Now, you ask friends and you ask other people and they say, uh, Bass and FLW should sponsor clinics. I completely agree with you, Kevin. Completely agree with you. And they do kind of. They do a lot of things with the, the young anglers, but there's still so much more that they can do. We ha it's unbelievably important that we get kids involved in the outdoors. It really is. Um, Bob says, I'm working with a kid from Michigan going to be on the top. Watch for Jaden Tillison. Well, let's, let's hope. I know I have a guy that I've been working with, not really working with him, but our boy um, Lunker Louie is a stud. So let's get back to this. So how, does, how, do, how do we evolve this sport? So I, I sent the same thing to Aaron and Aaron said, hey Steve, I think it's a good thing mostly, especially for the anglers and fans. We are definitely, we were definitely heading in the wrong direction. Now that's Johnny from the North. That is from Aaron Martins. Now if you know Aaron, angler of the year a couple times, unbelievable kind of a little out there every now and then but even he is saying we were headed in the wrong direction so this major league fishing is a great thing for them um i asked him you know does the money does this new money influx help and he said yes uh, i i have this this thing from major league fishing and that i wasn't supposed to get and i got it and and but a lot of the stuff i keep reading it and there's a lot of stuff in here so they, you know, we know that they have the 80 anglers going to join from Casey Ashley to, I mean, I could go through all of them. Casey Ashley, Justin Atkins, Adrian Avina, Josh Bertrand, Tommy Biffle, Zach Burge, Stephen Browning, Brent Chapman, Jason Christie, Luke Clawson, Gary Klaus, Dustin Connell, Brandon Coulter, Cliff Crochet, the Cajun baby, Mark Daniels Jr., Mark Davis, Ott Defoe, Boyd Duckett, Brent Ayler. I love Brent Ayler. Uh, James Elam, uh, Paul Elias, Edwin Evers, Todd Faircloth, Shinichi Fukai, I should say something else there, Shaw Grigsby, Greg Hackney, Roy Hawk, Brett Height, Tim Horton, Randy Howell, Mike Iconelli, who, who uh, just announced today, um, 
Alton Jones, Alton Jones Jr., Kelly Jordan, JT Kinney, Gary Klein, Jeff Crete, Jason Lambert, Bobby Lane, Chris Lane, Russ Lane, Jordan Lee, Matt Lee, Dave, Lef Dave Lef Lefebvre, Jared Littner, Justin Lucas, Aaron Martins, Mike McClellan, Cody Meyer, Ish Monroe, Andy Morgan, Andy, Andy Montgomery, John Murray, Britt Myers, Michael Neal, Tahaki Amuro, Cliff Pace, Brandon Palganeth, Brandon Palanick, Cleef Keith Boche, Jacob Porosnik, Skeet Reese, Marty Robinson, Dean Rojas, Mark Rose, Fred Rubanis, Mark Roy, Terry Scroggins, Fletcher Shryrock, Gerald S Softner, whatever how you say it, Wesley Strader, Scott S Suggs, Gerald Swindle, Randall Thawne, Jonathan Dan Van Dam, Kevin Van Nab, Greg Vincent, David Walker, James Watson, Jacob Wheeler, and Jesse Wiggins. That is the 80 anglers that are on uh, Major League Fishing. Now, some of the guys that stayed with Bass are Seth Fielder, Chris Zaldane. I'm not sure about Jake Whitaker yet. I heard there's a possibility that he got a full-time job, but let's hope. Micah Frazier, Bill Lowen, Keith Combs, Chad Pipkin, Scott Rook, Adrian Avina, and Drew Benton and Drew, uh, Brandon Lester. And a whole bunch of others. I mean, here is the list, as you can see. The red are the ones that are leaving. This is the top 46 anglers in bass. Who is left for bass and FLW? There aren't many. FLW only lost like 12 people. I should, you should, I should mention that. There's only 12 people that, uh, that took the invitation. There's 68 people from bass that are leaving. 68 out of 112, I think they had last year. 110. So that just tells you. So there's... There's a lot of things that have happened. This, the, and, and that's what everyone keeps telling the evolution of the sport. Where is this going? Like I said, I talked to the guys and they, they said, uh, there was, they, like Aaron said, I think it's good for the anglers. There's going to be more money in. There's more TV time. And, the, and that obviously they were unhappy with the way Bass was moving. And that's where we get this whole thing. There's people been saying, well, why, can't, why couldn't they could just merge? The problem there is, the problem there, there is, at one point in time, Major League Fishing did go to Bass and say, look, we would like to combine and let's do this our way and, and make one successful group instead of having three. But Major League, uh, Bass, I mean, Bass Elite overvalued themselves. And right now, their stock, if they were a stock, they'd be a penny stock. And that's really scary really scary now bass still has a couple things going from the college series the high school series the magazine gets 550,000 people and bass has the best media people on the earth i've said this a million times and i hate repeating it but when flw does something we never know that who wins we have to do a research and we got to ask somebody who won what tournament? What was the thing? Or go online and do it. Where Bass actually sends you out a daily thing as the tournaments are going. So that's where Bass is, is good. Now Major League Fishing can hopefully is going to do the same thing. But it's going to be a long time coming. I, I should say that. It's a long time hopefully coming. We're going to find out how this works. This might work and it might not work. But we but right now it's it's really a shame to say well let's have 14 let's have let's have one major group that doesn't work we can't all have the same car brand we need to have different a different taste and really the way wager league fishing is doing things is exciting and all the hours that they're going to have put into tv time and also internet time is outrageous 850 hours on on discovery channel and all those other one is insane 850 hours compared to 60 hours for bass. So hopefully it'll allow people to get, become a, in, involved and, and spread out and they'll be able to see what Major League Fishing is doing. Also the whole catch and release is awesome. Catch, But there's a still so many questions out there on how a tournament is gonna be held. These open tournaments where the public will be able to go, where we have 80 anglers competing. Those will be, those will be tournaments that everyone is gonna going to be able to go see and that's exciting this has been like i said when we started this has been the most exciting time in in fishing in 25 years it's all everybody talks about 
and the rumors. Like a, a perfect example. There's, you would think that you know some of these guys get along really well. Some of them are 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 very close friends, and that was the rumor. If you were good friends with Boyd, then that's why you got an invite. Because really, if you look at it, a person that's staying with Bass that should have received an invite, but they, I'm not sure. Keith Combs. Keith Combs is one of the best anglers on the, on the on the planet. So is Bill Lowen. Now I know Bill didn't accept it, and Bill's reason behind not accepting was is perfectly reasonable. He looked at it as a loyalty. What's better for his sponsors? How his sponsors are going to get viewed more now, and then also, you know, what's happening in the in the sport and incentives and things like that. So. This is, for some of these guys, staying with Bass makes sense. I talked to Brandon Card for 45 minutes the other day, and I told him, this makes sense for you to stay. I know you got a second invite, but you want to know what? You could be the face of Bass. Some, one of these guys is going to be the new bit, face of Bass. Mark Zona had his Zona Live on Monday, which is wonderful, and he had Chris Zaldane on, and they didn't really talk about what was going on. They just said, They finally sat down and said, this is what's happening. It's kind of weird. Things are really crazy. And Chris Aldane said, look, I stayed with Bass because it made more sense for my sponsors. But the thing is, is that, oh, there's my television. The thing is that um, they, uh, I had a phone call in there and it just messed me up. Chris Aldane said, there's been a lot of anglers that they've, they've lost their, their friendships over this. And that's where it gets a little personal. There shouldn't be any fights or arguments over something like this. This is deciding who can, it's amazing Steve can keep a straight face sometimes. I, I'm reading this and not I'm trying not to laugh. It, it's amazing that this would, would affect people's, sorry, would affect people's um, relationships. And that's, that's where it gets a little, a little weird. Um, Chris Aldane's a really good dude. Just had a little boy. Uh, just got married a couple years ago. I think we we interviewed him the week after he got married. And uh, I mean, I don't think anyone out there should. You shouldn't lose a friendship over this because you, what it, what this is is this is a decision on who can go which way. If you had the same decision as these guys, I think there would be a pretty good chance that you would go with Major League Fishing too. The Major League Fishing payouts is astronomical. In here, total payouts for 14 events is going to be $10 million with an anticipated sponsor contingency program that will easily exceed $10 million. That is a lot of money. That's a lot of cheese, as the guys keep saying on this thing. That is a lot of cheese. So... There'll be, there's going to be a lot of happy anglers and, and both tournaments are going to probably do well. But as I said, Bass is still looking for 35 or 40 people. They have not, they do not have an 80 uh, field team, an 80 angler field right now. So they're going to invite some new guys and that is going to in, introduce some new people into the industry and into tournament fishing. And then we'll see how they'll do, how they do. But they're going to have, they're kind of on the, they're already on the the back end of this because a lot of guys need to go out there and ask, get sponsors. And you have to remember that the sponsorship is about $46,000 this year to be on the Bass Elites. Yeah. The Warren said, don't, uh, didn't know about the sponsor deal. That would seal it for me to move. It, it's, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Um, I mean, the payout percentage is, so this is just on the elite stuff. These are just stats. This, these are the crazy stats that, you, that nobody knows about. Um, that So for the, the Bass Pro Tour, the Major League Fishing, the, ad, ad, the payout per angler over the whole year is going to be about $122,875. For the payout for the Elite Series, it's about 75388 that's a, a massive per angler deal. And that isn't, that isn't even 
the sponsor the sponsor contingency either. This is it's a it's a lot of money, and in the past a lot of anglers haven't made money on, on the tour, and this is giving a bunch of anglers the opportunity to, to make a living in this industry. It was funny because somebody somebody on Bass Live said yesterday said, well, we should consider ourselves fishing. We, I mean, uh, the same thing as golf. No, we shouldn't. No, we shouldn't. Bass fishing is a lot of fun. Is a lot of fun. Um, but a professional golfer, it, it takes a lot of time to be a professional golfer. Um, now, it's the same thing because it's it's one-on-one, -on -one, but in the grand scheme of it, a professional golfer, and I mean no disrespect, is a lot damn harder than catching bass. Now, catching five big ones, that's a lot of, that's it. But you can you can have a good day and do well. You don't have a good day in, in golf. You practice for days, months, years, and years and years. So you can't really compare, it's apples to oranges, in my opinion anyway. And I, and I love bass fishing. So, like I said, like I said, it's, it's, this is, this sport is, it's, it's doing a complete 180. Is it the world's strongest lineup, the 80 anglers that Major League Fishing has? Yes, it is. It really is. It's the best of the best, and uh, in three years, it'll, it, there'll be some new people that come in and, and they'll even make it stronger. Uh, but we're going to see a lot of new anglers in on the Bass Elites, and that is a great thing for us. Now, FLW is just like, we've, we're perfect as is, and I think FLW needs to rethink some of the strategy that they have. Uh, they are cutting down some of the anglers and no co-anglers, which is great, but we need to, the, the evolution of the sport needs to happen on introducing kids into fishing. That's what needs to happen. So hopefully this will help evolve having three tournaments. We don't know, we'll find out soon because the first tournament for Major League Fishing is at the end of January. Hold on, I can tell you, I can't tell you where. Where the hell is it? So the first, the first tournament will start a practice day on January 27th. So they'll have two days of practice then they'll have seven days of fishing tournament. So on days one and three, 40 anglers will go out. On two and four, another group of 40 will go out and then they'll compile it down to 40 anglers for day five and move on. So it should be a lot of fun. So if you get a chance, check us out on Facebook, on Twitter and Instagram. Make sure you send a, a, a hello and uh, tell them that you watch this and we'll send you a bunch of prize packs, but you have to subscribe and make sure you do it. Saturday morning we have uh, the Angler of the Year, Justin Lucas on the show, and at 8.30 we have Mike Iaconelli. So we're really looking forward to it. So make sure you get out there and see Tackle Webs, and we'll do another update in the next few days. Until then, get your fish on. If you watched the last video, I just want to give you a couple things here. If you watched the last video, it's going to go on YouTube. And what we'd like you to do is if you enjoyed it, go to YouTube, our YouTube channel, and our Instagram channel is Fishing FL Radio. Go there, subscribe, like, and click the notification button. But also send us a private message and say, hey, I listened to the I listened to Steve chatter on and do this crap for like 25 minutes send me some free crap and we will I got a list of things that we're gonna send you here's some stuff so you send us a, a private message and say hey I listened to I listened to the, the post and even though I thought it was horrible I still want something you deserve something for watching me sit here and do this trust me you do by the way how killer are those sunglasses? Hey now. These are the new Costa. These are the Costa Rikons, I think. Rincons just came out. Bob, nice seeing you back in Florida. I do have a VIP pass for you for next week's 
Gumbo Wars. But like I said, if you watch the last video or you watch this video, you need to send us a private message and say, hey, I want some free stuff. We have free giveaways every week that we have to get rid of. So we'll put you on a list and you'll get stuff from Daiichi, Egret Baits, Boat Locks, Culprit Riptide, Kuda Fishing Products, DOA, Mirror Lure, TTI Blakemore, Starbright Startron, Big Daddy Rod Racks, Z-Man, Monster 3X, Bass Assassin, Saltwater, Saltwater Assassin, and Catcher's Mitt. And if you don't know, we do giveaways once a month for Coast of Sunglasses, free, any pair you want. And we also do a, a monthly giveaway for a Castaway Invictus Rod. So you have to just participate. And what we do is you... you Send us a private message or do whatever and you get involved in this. But right now, all you got to do is send us a private message and tell us that you saw this video in the last video and we'll get you hooked up with some of those great products from some of our product sponsors. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. We just give them your address and they send it to you. They don't send you a bunch of crap afterwards or you don't get put on their email list. All they do is send you some free stuff and said, oh, congratulations, you won this from Fishing Florida Radio. So... I didn't have to go potty. You wanna know what happened? I'm sitting here and out of, out of my peripheral vision, you're welcome Warren, out of my peripheral vision, I see a, a car over here. Hold on. What? I see a car over here. And I think to myself, who the hell would be here at this time? It's like, it's eight o'clock. The lawnmower man wanted to get paid. So I was rushing to end the video, and I apologize. But I'm the only one that can pay him for some unknown reason. I don't get it. She has a checkbook too, but she just doesn't do it. Hello, Glenda. It's, it's maddening. So, make sure you check us out. Make sure you go on the YouTube channel and subscribe, click the notification button, and hit like, please. It really does help us. We're tracking all this stuff and trying to get all these other things. Yeah, women, exactly, Hammer. We're trying to get all this stuff on YouTube and Twitter and Instagram. So it's Fishing FL Radio. Go there, subscribe. I'm going to put this on there after Bukaki. I'll put this on after Gatchel yeah, here, something else. Um, I'll put this on up there, and I'll post this in the bottom too. But... If you have questions about Major League Fishing, by all means, you're welcome to ask. Saturday morning, we have a killer show. I mean, we really have a killer show. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about this because this has really been a major deal for us and everybody else over the last couple, like two and a half weeks. I mean, really, we heard about this at, at ICAST, but it wasn't for sure. There was like this twingling little mouse running around saying, hey, there's a possibility that Major League Fishing was going to do its own tour. But who knew that they'd bring 40 of the top 50 anglers? So I don't know. I'm not going to talk about Iconelli and that whole thing yesterday. I'm disappointed. That's all I'm going to say. I have to let it go. And that's what I'm going to do. I shouldn't, though. I really shouldn't. I should just be brutally honest and just say what I'm feeling. <sighs> then the swear fest will start. Does anybody find it weird that I have to drink out of a plastic cup that's Spider-Man? Anyway, like the video, get on YouTube, subscribe, make sure you send us a private message telling us that you watched it just between us. Yeah, well, if you come when you come over, I'll tell you how I feel, Bob. So go on there, like us, do all that. Um, we appreciate everyone listening to us. Like I said, Saturday morning, we'll be live, 6 to 9. We'll do the whole Facebook live. At 8 o'clock, we have Justin Lucas, 2018 Angler of the Year. It'll be great to talk to him. He will tell us a little bit more about uh, his decision. We weren't gonna, we weren't allowed to talk about it on Monday because he hadn't made the announcement, and then he told me we are allowed to talk about it. At 8.30, we'll talk to Mike Iconelli. He has a new show called Fish My City that's coming out, and um, we'll talk about that with him. So... Make sure 6 to 9 here on Facebook, and then we'll put it on, on YouTube also. So go there and check it out. We appreciate everyone doing this. Um, and DMAC, thank you. Thank you for, for watching. Jeff, 
Jeff will call in and we're going to talk about our gumbo cook-off and everything else. So there's so much, so many things going on this week. But we'll talk about Major League Fishing and Bass. Um, we'll talk to Justin Lucas. We'll talk to Ike and Ellie. And we'll have fun. You know, with Mike, it's is the best. We'll talk about going to fish uh, Ritz-Carlton here soon. I mean, Ritz-Carlton has a, a demo day coming up in January, I think it is. So that's really another thing we'll talk about. But we'll talk about tackle webs. If you don't know what tackle, tackle webs is, it's instant tackle storage. Our captain, Mike Ordergo, is the owner of the company. And really, you should get out there and check it out. So, thank you. Sorry I had to do a second video, but if he didn't come over, I wouldn't have done it um, and ring the doorbell because, I mean, I had to answer the phone. Hopefully my wife doesn't watch this, by the way, because I could get in a lot of trouble. If any of her Yenta friends are on here and they're telling her, just unsubscribe. You're, I don't want any Yenta friends in here. It's not cool. It's not cool. Anyway. Smash the thumbs up button on YouTube. We appreciate everybody. Thanks a lot. We'll see you Saturday morning. Until then, get your fish on. Later, guys. Is Jim. Jim loves fishing, boating, anything to do with time on the water. Whether on the flats with his buddies, cruising around with the family, or an early morning solo session on his kayak or paddleboard. His time on the water is important and what he looks forward to after a long week of work. But no matter what boat he is on, there never seems to be a good way to keep the gear he needs organized, secure, and easy to get to in a safe place. Until one day, he found out about Tackle Webs. With Tackle Webs, Jim can easily add durable, accessible storage to any of his vessels wherever he needs his stuff. Now, Jim enjoys stress-free days on the water, no matter how much stuff his friends and family brings. Find out how Tackle Webs can help you at TackleWebs.com.